Avtar Singh Kandar was assassinated by India, and the UK is complicit in the cover-up. That's the conclusion of a report released over the weekend by the combined efforts of several Sikh organisations investigating the death of the Khalistan campaigner in June. In a live stream broadcast, the team reported that Kandar's death was initially suspicious because he was in apparently good health. He had been demonised by Indian media and the eventual celebration of his death on Indian social media even before his death was public knowledge. Kandar's name was not only mentioned in the dossier given to Prime Minister Cameron in 2015 by Modi, he had been the subject of a false narrative that he was responsible for removing the Indian flag from the High Commission in London in a protest earlier in the year. After this, he received telephone death threats from Indian security officials. The Indian media regularly painted Kandar as a legitimate target and threat to the Indian state. And the campaign against him was based on criminalising his advocacy for Khalistan as terrorist activity, falsely linking him to Sikh insurgent formations and claiming he was providing support to Bai Deep Sidhu and Bai Amritpal Singh. In the report, the investigative team state the reported cause of death was acute myeloid leukaemia, AML, symptoms of which can be induced by poisoning from benzene and polonium-210. Internationally, this is a well-recognised method to kill dissidents, and India has historically used poisoning as a method to target Sikh resistance figures. Of course, Kandar was known to have been in perfectly good health leading up to his death. But the investigation by the team highlights the more concerning behaviour of West Midlands police and the coroner, who proved obstructive and not following normal protocols after Kandar's death, as we have previously reported. Despite concerns of the family, the coroner refused to transfer Kandar's body to obtain a second opinion on the cause of death. No post-mortem was conducted, no tissue samples were taken, and no advanced toxicology was undertaken all of which would have revealed the cause of death from poisoning. Interestingly, the report referred to a leak from mortuary staff to the funeral directors, stating that they had been contacted by the National Crime Agency and told to seal up the body and not allow anyone access. Consequently, this team was gathered to carry out a private investigation. Despite most experts that have been approached refusing to carry out a private autopsy, citing the need for police approval, one expert did agree, but the coroner would only agree to release the body if a death certificate was issued. In turn, the Home Office would only grant a visa to Kandar's family to attend the funeral with a death certificate. But a death certificate would only be released if the family accepted that AML was the cause of death, in itself a highly suspicious use of process to force acceptance. In desperation, the family agreed, and the Home Office subsequently refused the visas anyway. So, as the investigative team reported, their work continues, with their now released report concluding that Kandar's death bore the marks of an intelligence agency led assassination, with potential complicity or negligence from UK authorities. And to any independent observer, it does appear, at least on the face of it, they may be right. You've been watching Sutledge TV News. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button to make sure you get to see stories as they're broadcast. And of course, if you have any comments or opinions on any of our news stories, you can comment below. Or indeed, drop us a direct message at message at satledgetv.com. We do love to hear from you. In the meantime, thanks for watching for Sutledge TV News. I'm Angus Scott in London.